I am uh, occasionally asked about the essence of my doctoral study when I went for my doctorate in business. So I thought I'd, I'd record this little short video to talk about it. Uh, the essence of my study extended the organizational growth theories of second generation org theorist, Dr. Larry Greiner. I, I, was, uh, I was pleased to have him as a professor when I went for my master's at University of Southern California. And then uh, after graduation, we became friends and we consulted uh, together. And then I eventually launched on my own. So uh, there, there's quite a bit of, of his uh, approach that I extended in my dissertation. Uh, so I went all the way back to mass production era uh, theorist, uh, Henri Fiol and Max Weber, for instance. Henri Fiol uh, introduced such theories as unity of command and authority, division of labor, uh, subordinate of individual interest are just a few of his concepts. And Max Weber introduced the pyramid shape of org structures. Okay, so that was a pretty good start. Uh, but I, you know, when I looked at those dates and how we've moved more into customer relations era, that all of that seemed to have made sense back in the production era, but we've moved uh, more into a customer relations type approach in business. So um, I took a look at Professor Charles Hill, uh, who studied a lot of international business and, and the processes of international businesses. And what I what I discovered as I read his work that uh, even if you're a small business, you're affected by global events. All right, so that was that was a, a, a large framework uh, of my study, and uh, in particular, I wanted to look at the human resource effect of growing. I actually looked at two frames. I looked at the change of decisions as a company grew, and then I looked at the change of organizational structures as a company grew. But in both those endeavors, I found that there was a uh, an extreme human resource component. So as a matter of fact, for instance, uh, as growing organizations tend to go global, they experience more business related changes. Uh, volume of business goes up, the complexity goes up, innovation increases, diversity increases, distribution channels increase. So uh, a lot of changes, a lot of changes. So I, I kind of looked at a couple of frames of uh, companies and networked activities between companies, starting with a spectrum of being global. And as I moved down the growth continuum to look at multi domestic companies, in fact, multinational and transnational companies, uh, international first, then multinational, and then ultimately transnational. I, I saw some interesting uh, phenomenon related to uh, nation uh, interdependence or not. Okay, so this was a very uh, interesting uh, study that I don't want to give you uh, all of the uh, intermediate results of, of what I learned, but let me just say that as I looked at structure and processes, what I found is that there's a lot of coordination necessary. Okay, coordination among activities located in different nations, coordination involving sharing of information, allocating responsibilities and aligning efforts. Okay. A little bit of Gert Hofstede found its way in there. Uh, so I studied about 30 companies uh, 
and uh, full of, I don't know, a conglomerate of maybe four or five major uh, countries uh, besides the United States were in my study. And so now in my postdoc days, I'm looking a lot at profit margins and and uh, how one can um, develop earnings qualities and separate trans transitory earnings from from permanent earnings so that you can kind of get a sense of um, what leads to uh, ultimate uh, profit margins, net income over net sales. And so that earnings quality gave me some, uh, it continues to give me some insight into companies as I continue to watch and study for growth. Uh, also, you know, the, the obvious return on assets, net income over average total assets, uh, profitability measures too. But as I drill into the specifics of uh, activity ratios, for instance, asset turnover ratios, net sales over average total assets, um, I began to look a lot at the variance of a differentiation strategy, right? You want to differentiate your company uh, from the competition. You want to look at your time and use of specialized knowledge. Okay, it's sometimes more static than dynamic. Sometimes it's more dynamic than static. Uh, but in today's economy, I see it, you know, my, this is my personal preference now, is it's more dynamic, okay, more um, agile. And so it would be great if you had unlimited resources, but you do not, right? But that's sort of the nirvana that's sort of the model you want to kind of look at yourself as an unlimited resource model outlasting your competition in other words what i found uh as i studied the 30 industries i what i did is i i looked at a decade from 2000 2010 and what i was most interested in is those companies that had a sustained growth as you know, there was a dip in 2002 for many people after the 2 uh, 9 11 attack. And there was another dip in companies in 2007 or 8 when the real estate debacle occur occurred. So I was most interested in those companies that uh, sustained in spite of those uh, contingencies. And a lot of what I learned there is what I just said that they had a uh, I, I would say the best way that I could describe it is they, they had sustaining relationships with uh, other providers. Their supply chain was well-defined uh, and targeted, uh, but they, they were coordinating. They, they had pool sequential reciprocal communication links that integrated and linked together different resources to uh, accomplish collective goals. So that's kind of a, a general air overview. You know, when you, when you start to look at your company and you look at the supplier customer relationships and the simultaneous constraints that exist, if all of you attempt to figure out how you work best together, uh, there's quite a lot of learning that goes on. And so that's what I do now, postdoctorate. I, I specialize in the information uh, architecture that uh, enables such collaboration and coordination. Hope that makes sense. You know, just a simple summary. Uh, if we get a chance to talk, I can give you some of the more granularly granular details of my study all right so thanks very much for listening dr hamilton